Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath Amen. praise ye the Lord. That's just the truth. Anyhow, Amen. with the Weathersby's of Sound the Alarm Ministry brought to you by Heart and Ministry Network. I'm Pastor Evangelist Arthur L. Weathersby. And I'm Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. Amen. Joel 2.1 is the scripture for the ministry. We're crying loud. We're sparing not. Isaiah 58.1, mm -hmm. which is the primary motto. The secondary motto is if we can't help you, we won't hurt or harm you. We thank God for you coming back and joining us for this this segment, amen, this this particular segment of this particular subject that we've been dealing with for the last three weeks. Amen. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's been a good subject, y'all. Yes, we thank, thank you, God Father. for that. We thank God for you. And we might as well just go and get started. Amen. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we lift up our hearts in one accord. Hallelujah. Saying, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Father, forgive us for our sins and trespasses, O oh God. Sins of omission and commission, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the watching the word of your word. Thank you for the blood of Jesus applied to the doorposts of our heart and mind. Thank you for this soul greater salvation. Thank you for your word, God, because it's a lamp to our feet. A light into our path, oh God. Thank you, God, for the supporters of Heart Ministry Network, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All the prayer warriors, oh God, the supporters, God. The, oh God, we just thank you for them all. And the CEOs, Pastors Ken and Brenda Divers, God, we just thank you for them, God. Continue to bless the work of the hands, oh God. Thank you for saving, set free, healing, and delivering. Souls are coming in, Father. Oh God, hearts are coming back to you, Father. Oh God, in these last and evil days, Days, oh God, we thank you for the avalanche of healing and deliverance and power, oh God, because you're still God. Hallelujah. You're still wonderful. Hallelujah. You are king of all kings, Lord of all lords. You reign supreme, my father. Hallelujah. Still God. Hallelujah, father. You always was God, always will be my father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this so great a salvation. Thank you for this so great a relationship, my father. Thank you, God. Hallelujah for enduring us, oh God. Hallelujah, my father. Thank you, God, for giving us that patient endurance, oh God, through everything that we have come through to where we are right now, to where we're going through to. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh, it's all joy. Hallelujah. It's all good because it's all God. So Father God, let the words of our mouth, meditation, and our heart be acceptable in thy sight, oh Lord, our strength. And our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're coming out of the Amplified Study Bible, 1 Peter 4th chapter, starting at the 17th 17 through the 19th verse. 17 through the 19th verses. Amen. For it is the time destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? 18 verse. And if it is difficult for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the godless and the sinner? 19 verse. Therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffering in accordance with the will of God must continue to do right and commit their souls for safekeeping to the faithful creator. Amen. So we have read in our hearing, 1 Peter 4th chapter, verses 17 through the 19th verse. Amen. We thank God for the reading of the scripture because, again, um, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in their way. Amen. Amen. I tell you what, I feel a praise break. Blessed Hallelujah. be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, O Most High. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, O Most High. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Tower, the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The name of the Lord is 
a strong tower, tower, the righteous run into it, and they are safe. That's why we sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name of the Lord, almost oh, high. Amen, Praise amen. God. Blessed Come be the name of the Lord. Blood. We Praise got a God. subject for the scripture that was read into your hearing. Uh huh. Here, here are the answers. Here, here is the is. answer mm -hmm. to the questions why. Yeah, here is the answer to the questions why. And I know many people, as we said before, are, it is the nature of man to ask questions. We are inquisitive by nature. We we brought that out before, and we're always trying to find answers to mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. That's why you have science. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, science is all about finding out the answer to certain things, this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. Yes. My God, they're, they're trying to find the answer uh, to this co this coronavirus that's happening, this pan global pandemic that has hit the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. And they're searching for the answers and, mm -hmm. and they're doing all that they can in research and, and in testing and Hallelujah. things of that nature to try to come mm -hmm. up with the answer. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you that if you have a question, if you have Hallelujah. questions about anything concerning your life and, 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 and how you should live your life, I'm going to tell you where you can find the answer, the Word of God. Amen. That's My why God's mind. Word, once again, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our past. And matter of fact, Jesus told the devil that man shall not live by bread alone. That's right. But by every, every word, word that proceed from the mouth of God. I tell you, the Bible is, is words that are proceeding from the mouth of God. Oh, my God. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because all scripture is given unto man by inspiration of That's the Holy right. Ghost. That's right. Amen. So it came from his mouth to their ears. Amen. Amen. And it's now in, in the book, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's written. It, it is, is written. written. That's mm -hmm. right. And forever remains written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We're in First Peter, the fourth chapter and the 17th verse. And it says, for it is the time destined for mm -hmm. judgment to begin with the household of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, now some people did not believe or do not believe that believers in Christ have to stand before judgment. Mm. I don't know where you got that from. Lord Jesus. I don't know where you got that from. <laughs> but let me help you. Let's go to <laughs> let's go to um I think I want to go to Matthew the twenty fifth chapter. I think that's where I want to go, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And I'm gonna start at verse number thirty one. Mm -hmm. And this is what it says in the Amplified Bible. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and majesty and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Now watch this. Verse 32. All the nations will be gathered before him for judgment. Mm -hmm. And he will separate them mm -hmm. from one another as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. Now I want to help you. All the nations, that's people. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. And verse mm -hmm. thirty three says, mm -hmm. and he will put and he will put the sheep on the right, the place of honor, and the goats on his left, the place of rejection. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. Then the king will say to those on his right, watch this, come, you blessed of my father, you favored of God, appointed to eternal salvation, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's the believers mm -hmm. standing before the judgment of God, be Jesus Christ. And that's his that's his declaration to them. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then I'm going to drop down. I'm going to go to um, uh, um, I'm going to go down to uh, um, the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go down to the unbelievers. I'm gonna, that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to verse number 41. Then he will say to those on his left, mm -hmm. leave me, you cursed ones. Into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So you see, believers, you're going to stand before the judgment of God. Amen. I don't know where we got that thought from, but that's, mm -hmm. that's not what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. But if anyone suffered, no, verse 17, for is the time destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. That's why he had the ones on the right dealt with first. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay. And, it, and, if it be, and if it begins with us. What will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? I mm -hmm. said, 
I said Matthew 21, 41, 25, 41. Mm -hmm. He would say to those on, on, on his left, leave me, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his yes. angels. Here's the answer to the questions, why? Mm -hmm. Amen. Why must we stand before judgment? Because God has to do a separation. That's right. He has to do a separation. And he's gathering everybody together because the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, it all belongs to him. Mm -hmm. So whether you are saved, uh, whether you are saved or unsaved, you belong to God and you have to stand before him. And how do I know that to be so? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Uh-huh. Let's go to Philippians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go to Philippians and watch what it says here in Philippians 2, 9. For this reason also, because he obeyed, that's Jesus Christ, y'all, and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus Every knee shall bow in submission. All those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, sovereign God, to the glory of God the Father. So what, am I, so what is the scripture saying? Whether, you are, whether you're a believer or you're an unbeliever, your knee going to bow. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Your tongue going to confess mm -hmm. that he is Lord. Amen. Now, here's the good news. You have occasion to let your knee bow and let your tongue confess right now. That's and right. if you do that, then you'll be on the right hand. That's right. Because he says, see me now. Or see me later. See me later. But one thing about it. You're going to see me. You're going to see me. You're going to see me. Mm -hmm. So the question is, well, how do you, when do you want to see him? Wow. Do you want to see him now? If I was you, I'd make it a sense of urgency. Amen. And I hurry up and go get, get to see him. Don't worry. You, you, you'll you get a chance to do that. Uh-huh. Then it goes on to say in verse 17, mm -hmm. for the time of death for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, oh, I read that. What was the outcome of that? We already, mm -hmm. we gave you the answer mm -hmm. to the questions why. Verse 18 says, and if it is difficult for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the godless and the sinner? Why is it difficult for the righteous to be saved? Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, let's see. What would be the reason or the yes. answer or the question, the answer to the question, mm -hmm. why is it difficult for the righteous to be saved? I'll tell you what, I'm going to look at this scripture that uh, this is referring to me to. I want to go to Proverbs. Mm -hmm. 1131. And see what it says in 1131. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 11 and verse 31. And this is what it says. Uh-huh. If the righteous will be rewarded on the earth with godly blessings, how much more will the wicked and the sinner mm -hmm. be repaid with punishment? Mm -hmm. But that don't really tell you, no. but it just tells you what's going to happen for the that's righteous. That's right. Uh, that they're going to be rewarded with godly blessings because that's what we stand in judgment for to receive our, to receive our rewards. Amen. That's right. Our crowns. Amen. Uh-huh. And uh, how much more will the wicked? Well, mm -hmm. let me tell you why it was going to be difficult for the righteous to be saved. Because that that gate, the Bible says, yeah, go back to Matthew 7, 13. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's why it's difficult, y'all. Amen. Because it's a hard road that we travel. Yeah. Amen. And we just have to be, you know, the Bible says, um, yeah, yeah, we have to we have to travel a hard road and we have to oh wrong yeah, Hebrews 12, 1. We'll get there too, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh 713 says, mm -hmm. enter through the narrow gate. For why is the gate and broad and easy to travel the path that leads the way to destruction and eternal loss? And there are many who enter through it. But small is the gate mm -hmm. and narrow and difficult to travel is the path that leads the way to everlasting life. Mm -hmm. And it says there are few who find it. Yeah, That's why yes, scarcely yes. will the righteous be able to get in. Yeah. Because only few people are finding the way to that narrow gate. Or choose to find a way to the narrow mm -hmm. gate. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because many of us, are, you know, the choices that we make is not necessarily going to put us on that narrow pathway. It's going to put us on Broadway. Yes. And why is it put us on Broadway? Because we like to do what we want to do. You know, it's our thing. We can do, do what, what we, we want to do. do. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't tell, tell me. No, you can't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. You just can't tell me. I do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm grown. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, what did your parent used to say to you when you used to tell them that you was grown? Yeah. I get slapped in the face. I don't know about nobody else. Well, you know what? God allows you to get slapped in the face, too, when you tell when you tell them that you're grown. He'll let life uh, slap yeah, you in the face. You. you know, as a matter of fact, that's in there somewhere. Uh huh. So so let me go to um, um let me go to verse uh, Hebrews twelve one. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses mm -hmm. who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Amen. Now, verse two says, looking away from all that will distract us mm -hmm. and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. The first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity, mm -hmm. who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame and set down at the right hand mm -hmm. of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority <clears throat> and, mm -mm -mm, and completion of his work. That's why it's kind of difficult for us mm -hmm. to get in because we ain't willing to do what Jesus did. I tell you what, we're going to take a pause for the call. We'll come right back. Amen. I tell you, that's just the truth. Anyhow, with the Weathersby's of Sound, the Alarm Ministries, we'll be right back. Good afternoon, good evening. I'm Pastor Vance Arthur L. Weathersby, along with my wife, Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. We are Sound Alarm Ministries, and we have a program on Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Heart Ministry Network TV. That's just the truth. Anyhow, you ought to be watching that. If you don't, you're in trouble. I'm telling you, we do the thing in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye. That's just the truth. Anyhow, Amen. with the Weathersby's of Sound Alarm Ministry, Amen. welcome you back. Welcome Brought to you by Heart Ministry Network TV. So, yeah, we're talking about... That is going to be in verse on First Peter four eighteen. It says, and it is difficult for the righteous to be saved. What will become of the godless and the sinner? Well, we already identified on um, what's going to become of the the godless and the sinner. Straight to hell. Mm -hmm. And after you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, um, you 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 know your your destiny has already been predetermined. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That's but right. the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Now the the thing is is that you have to make you have to get into the life uh, through Christ Jesus and stay the course, because t some people get in and then they get out. That's right. How can you get in and get out? Oh Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think once you you know once you're saved, you're saved. Mm -hmm. Well, that that would be true if you're saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because mm -hmm. if you're living a life of salvation. Then, <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. Then what ought to be happening is that transformation ought to yeah. be taking place. Yes, Amen. Because you shall right. know them by the fruit that they bear. And many people profess salvation, but the question is, are they really saved? Because when you're really saved, I don't care what what you know and what what you might say, but there there would be some evidence of that mm -hmm. salvation yeah. showing forth yeah. in your life. Yeah, really. Not in what you say, but in how you live your life. Um, you ought not be operating in the same manner to operating in when you were in sin. Amen. That's Amen. why a Romans 6, 1 is so important and 6, 2. We ought not be doing that. We, we should be going through that transformation process mm -hmm. where we've allowed God by way of the Holy Ghost yes. to transform us into the image and likeness. He's reshaping and remolding us yes. because we were at one time shaped and molded into his image. You know, he said in Genesis 1:26, mm -hmm. let us make man. Yeah, God the Father, God the Son, create man, make man in mm -hmm. our image and our likeness. And then in image and likeness of God, did he create man? And he did that through Genesis 2, 7. And the Bible says, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils by his breath, a spirit of life, and man became a living being. Amen. We took on the spirit. We took on the image and likeness of God by virtue of his spirit being blown into us. Amen. And again, if you're a believer in Christ, you have that same process happens to you. And how do I know that to be? So I'm so glad you asked. I'm, I'm, I'm going to a favorite scripture now. Ephesians 2.1. <laughs> and you, he made alive mm -hmm. when you were spiritually dead and separated from him. Because of your transgressions and sins. That's what God did on our behalf. Amen. And because he did that on our behalf, then we're supposed to walk and live in that new life. Amen. And when you walk and live in that new life, then you won't fulfill the lust of your flesh, mm -hmm. but you will fulfill the will of God. That Amen. what is pleasing uh, in his sight for you will be accomplished when you live in, and when you live in his will. 
Amen. God. And that's why we shouldn't, we should, um, you know, understand, you know, even more what the scriptures are saying and not, you know, not despise the judgment of God. Now, this judgment is not so much particularly to condemnation in this particular scripture, but it's about evaluating us because many times you, we don't evaluate ourselves. Mm -hmm. The word of God says, examine ourselves to see if we be of the faith. Amen. Praise God. And now the time is destined. The time is here. It's been here, but it's even increased of the judgment. Praise God of God upon the, the church. That's right. Praise God. Not the building. He ain't judging the brick and mortar. He's judging us. He's evaluating us. We're being cleansed. We're being purged to see what sort of work we're doing and, and why we do what we do. And you'll find that scripture if you wanted to read it for reference in 1 Corinthians. Praise God, the third chapter, 10 through the 15 work, where every man's work will be tried and tested. Amen. So we thank God. We ought to thank God that judgment is upon the household of faith now. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because it's preparing us to stand before God one day for the final judgment amen of the of the world of the church of the world and it goes on to say also if you begin with us what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of god he he talked about that and, and it's difficult for the righteous to be saved what we become of the godless and sinner the, the man of god spoke on that by way of the holy holy ghost therefore 19 verse talks about those who are ill-treated once again, we could talk about how we're being ill-treated and suffering in accordance with the will of God. When you suffer in the will of God and you're ill-treated and you're insulted, thank God we're in good company. God had to get us there. He had to get me there. I wasn't always thinking like that, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm in good company with Jesus. Praise God when I'm insulting. We got to remember there's some things we've done. You know, some things you reap what you sow. Praise God as well. But when you're actually suffering, when you're in the suffering of Christ, and we understand what that means and what that is, praise God, the same suffering he suffered. Amen. Praise God. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. We're in good company. Good company. Therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffer. In accordance with the will of God, once again, it must be the will of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Doing what's right. We are what? The righteousness of God. We are people that have been positioned in Christ Jesus, not of our own righteousness. We understand that. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're not talking about self-righteousness because that's like a filthy, dirty rag in the sight of God. Amen. But we're talking about the righteousness of God. Doing what's right. Doing what is pleasing to him because even Jesus said, I do all things to please my father. And this is how we're supposed to live because many times in life, I know it has been a grave time in my life when I live to please others. And guess what? You will never live to please others or you and I will never live to please ourselves because we can't. It's always hungry for this, that, or the other. But when we live to please God, Hallelujah. Praise God in accordance to what's, what's right and continue in that way. Praise God. Then we can commit our souls for safekeeping to the faithful creator. We got somebody we can go to. We have somebody uh, that we can cast, keep casting our cares upon because he is the faithful creator because he's the one that created us. Amen. Because let's go back over that 19th scripture again. Therefore, mm -hmm. those who are ill-treated and suffering according with the will of God must continue to do right that's right and, and you know what that's a challenge mm -hmm. that's a challenge yes because indeed. when you're being ill-treated mistreated by someone um and they, and they cause great grief and um and, and distress your your natural inclination is oh no and they don't work my last nerve or something like that. They got me feeling a certain kind of way. And you know they used to say this back in the in the day this was one of the things that People that supposedly were in the Lord would say, you about ready to make me lose my religion. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, no, we're supposed to hold on mm -hmm. to the faith. Amen. Even though you're being mistreated, even though you're being uh, 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 persecuted, mm -hmm. even though you're suffering. Mm -hmm. And why is that so? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that we have a perfect example in Jesus Christ. When he was on the cross at Calvary. He was reviled. 
He was spoken of in such ill ill manner that you yeah. wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says he never said a mumbling, a mumbling word. word. Lord, As a matter of fact, to those that were mistreating him, that were speaking ill of him, that were crucifying him, guess what he said? Father, forgive, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord God Almighty, they did not know what they did, but Jesus Christ knew what he was doing. He was being true to his relationship with the Lord of God. He was being true to uh, uh, fulfilling the will of God. That's why at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, because God gave him a name above every name, mm -hmm. because in his flesh, watch this, he had an occasion to, to give up. His, his faith to give up his relationship with God mm -hmm. and he had and, and he did have that opportunity mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna show you let's go to mm -hmm. Matthew the 26th chapter mm -hmm. uh-huh Matthew the 26th chapter I'm gonna pick it up at that 36th verse mm -hmm. amen as I get there and this is what it says then Jesus came to them to a place called Gethsemane olive press and he told his disciples sit here while I go over there and pray and taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee James and John he began to be grieved and greatly distressed. Mm -hmm. He was suffering, y'all. Mm -hmm. Then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved so that I'm almost dying of sorrow. Stay here and stay awake and keep watch with me. And after going a little farther, he fell face down and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, that is consistent with your will. Let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Now understand mm -hmm. what he was going through. Mm -hmm. He was being, he was suffering. He had some mm -hmm. great suffering mm -hmm. because he knew what was going to happen mm -hmm. to him. He knew how he was going to die. He wanted to find a way in his flesh for another way if it was in God's will for it. I like what it says yes. there. It says that if it was in his will, mm -hmm. God's will. Mm -hmm. But then he said, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not my will, That's right. but your will be done. It don't that's matter. Right. I'm going to do whatever it is that you want me to do. That's, that, that's, that's the will that you have for me because I came, as a matter of fact, he told his disciples once before, I came to do the will of the Father that sent me. Mm -hmm. What he tells me to do, that's what I that's do. Right. And I do it irregardless of whether things are going good for me or they're going bad for me. I just do it because of the relationship. So therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffer in accordance with the will of God must continue to do right. That's right. Because if you don't continue to do right, then that means that you're doing wrong. That's and if right. you're doing wrong, then guess what? The Bible says that only the righteous shall see God. Only the righteous. You're doing wrong, and you're doing, when you're doing wrong, you, I mean, you're consistently mm -hmm. doing wrong. Mm -hmm. That means habitually, habitually. doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Guess what? You ain't saved. You can't mm -hmm. be saved. You cannot be habitually sinning and be saved. Amen. Because I'm for a little word in us that he can bring it back to our remembrance. <laughs> First John 3 and 9 says, No one who is born of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. As the man of God was speaking about. Because God seed his principle of life. The essence of his righteous character remains permanently in him. When you got the word in you and us, it's in there. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're allowing it to do is something different, but it's in there. Remains permanently in him who is born again. Okay. Who is reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for his purpose. And he who is born again cannot, as the man of God mentioned that word habitually, habitually live. That person cannot habitually live a life characterized by sin. We can't do that. Not when the seed of God's word is in us. Greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. We cannot. So we got to do what Romans 6 chapter lets us know. Okay, let me finish that in, in 1 John 3 and 9. He cannot habitually live a life characterized by sin because he is born of God and longs to please him. Amen. We can't long to please him apart from the Holy Ghost. Because after without the Holy Ghost, y'all, we can't. I know God knows I know. I can't do nothing. It's not in me to do right in this flesh. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Hallelujah. That's why we needed a Savior. Amen. That's why we needed to be reborn again. That's why many today, praise God, we pray that we receive salvation. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believing in your heart. God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. That's the first entrance, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we know that those of us that are saved, we cannot habitually live in, in sin, praise God, because the seed of God is in us. That's right. So, so, so here, I know I, there's a question out there right now, but, but how can I do that, even being saved, because I'm only human? Yield yourself. And I'm not perfect. That's right. No, you're not. Praise God. But we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to Proverbs 3, 5, 6, mm -hmm. trust mm -hmm. in the Lord mm -hmm. with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Mm -hmm. When you allow God to direct your path, I told you, operate yes. in his divine will. Yes. And if you're in God's divine will, you absolutely are doing things that please him. Amen. Amen. And so, therefore, uh, it, it says they commit their souls for safekeeping to the faithful creator. Mm -hmm. Because why? Mm -hmm. It's in him that I live, move, and yes. have my very being. Uh, Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of my faith. My faith. When, Jesus, when Jesus Christ, oh my God, yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was yet still on the cross and he was dying, mm -hmm. one of the last seven words that he said as well, besides that one about, oh, Father, forgive them for them, no matter what they do. He says, Father, into thine hand I commit my spirit. He gave up the ghost. He committed his spirit yes, over to God. Mm -hmm. When we commit ourselves, our souls over to God for safekeeping, yeah. it says to the Faithful, faithful creator. creator. One that we trust. That's right. One that who, who is faithful and worthy, praise God, of us committing ourselves unto. We don't commit ourselves to one another. We commit our soul unto Christ. That's right. Because going back to Philippians 1, 6, I'm mm -hmm. convinced. Yeah. That he had begun that good work in me is faithful and just and completed till the coming of, the, of, Je of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a faithful creator. Faithful. And not only that, it's now unto him. Now unto him. That is able mm -hmm. to keep you from falling. Now falling, y'all, is sinning. Mm -hmm. And to present you faultless. That's blameless. Now I didn't say perfect. That's right. But blameless. Blameless. Before the presence of his mm -hmm. glory. Mm -hmm. So so that's why we commit ourselves over him. That's why we stay the course. We don't let what we're going through cause us to deviate. And, 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 and try to go another way or try to get around and mm -hmm. go a detour. Mm -hmm. No, there ain't but one way. One it's straight way. and narrow. Mm -hmm. Amen. So right now, I think you know the answer to the questions why. So that's, you know what? We're done. That's just the truth anyhow with the Wesleys of Sound the Alarm yeah, Ministry. Lord. Brought to you by Heart yeah, Ministry Jesus. Network. When it is being and has been done from the heart, right. you know that it is being and has been done right. right. Till we come back at you the next time with a new subject, guess Amen. what? We, we do, do the thing. thing. In, In the Lord. Lord. God, God bless, bless you. Bye-bye. We love you. Amen.